Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is Arise News Analyst, Distinguished Niger Wife, Vimbai Mutihiri Ebeyong. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, my favorite doctor is back in town. <laughs> Good morning, Ayo. Good morning, Good morning. Vimbai. It's so Bye. good to be Good here today. And uh, I suppose, shall we get straight into it? Really enjoyed that interview that you just had, by the way. Um, but uh, let's get into it and we kick off, of course, with this day as tradition dictates. Now, leading story is, of course, a conversation that is continuing. No end to it in sight. And you've already discussed it in detail on the program this morning. Nobody's above the law in Nigeria, say EFCC, ICPC, as interrogators grill Edu. So they say they'll probe anyone not playing by the rules. Anti-graft agency quizzes bank chiefs. Tunji Ojo in Villa affirms that no cause for alarm. A Feni Ferry seeks open fair investigation and suspicion is not enough. That is according to Atiku's aides. So we've already looked at that in focus. But let's look at another massive story just above the masthead, which is FCCPC Act shows Tinubu may have reached law in removal of Irukera. So uh, Femi Falana has said that the ex uh, executive vice chair deserves commendation for getting tobacco company to pay $110 million uh, fine to Nigeria, argues that the use of the word dismissal to describe his removal is libelous. And the federal government has, of course, responded through the person of Bayo Anonuga saying Irukera Oko relieved of their duties, not dismissed. Now, just to give you a little bit of insight, the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission has shown that the president uh, may have uh, just, uh, sorry, this report, how, which looked at the review of the act of the uh, Federal Comp Competition and Consumer Protection Act shows that the due process would have been for this uh, relief of duties, as they're calling in calling it to go through the Senate. And this is what uh, Femi Falanasan is also advocating for, uh, saying that due process was not followed in the removal of Irukera and Alex Oko. So uh, that is what is leading on the front page of this day. Let's head over to the Punch newspaper. Of course, again, humanitarian ministry scandals. EFCC seizes Edu, former minister's passports, uh, bank MDs grilled, suspended minister barred from traveling. So uh, the story is not going anywhere anytime soon but let's go to the very bottom of the paper on the right hand side of course is this story another story that's not going away anytime soon tb joshua scoan faults bbc report ex-disciple knox late prophet uh, so of course we do know that the church itself has not released an official statement but members are coming out to state their own positions. This particular report is uh, reports on the statement by Mr. Dari Adejumo, who says that uh, the documentary is faulted. And I quote, he said, it's descended into fictional narratives and propaganda. And he also referred to the accounts of those who spoke in the documentary as offensive and disenchanted en en reports of disgruntled elements. Well, this is according to a church member. Um, it's a pity that the man himself uh, who is in question is not alive to respond. Anyway, let's move over to the Nigerian Tribune. Again, uh, leading with, uh, leading, this one is leading with the Tinubu slashes entourage for foreign local trips by 60%. Another, another conversation that was had this morning. What I want to zero in on, however, is uh, just below that, Rivers Assembly asks Fubara to represent 2024 budget. We all remember <laughs> how that played out and how the budget was presented to a room of just five lawmakers. Well, the speaker, Martin Amaule, the reinstated speaker, shall I say, has said that it is worrisome that the, the House is yet to receive the 2024 budget from the governor. Now, we move over to the Vanguard newspaper. Vanguard is, of course, leading with graft issues. 585 million Naira graft. EFCC quizzes better edu for hours. Uh, and uh, an, a story at the very bottom on the left-hand window. Federal government shuts third mainland bridge for eight weeks repair. Uh, uh, you know, bittersweet for commuters here in Lagos. Of course, we want the bridge to be in the best condition, but it is starting to cause increased frustration, uh, you know, the manner in which it has to be shut down. Anyway, many ways to look at that conversation. Now let's go to the Guardian newspaper. 
Guardian, again, Nigerians want probe expanded to other poverty alleviation schemes, which is a point I know that uh, I heard, I believe Ayo made that point earlier in the conversation, that people are saying that, well, if this is what's happening in the ministry alone, look at all of the other aspects of humanitarian and poverty alleviation schemes that have been rolled out by the government and several governments over the years. Can we also look, look into those? Another story that caught my attention below that main image is the army confirms the arrest of a soldier for insulting Sanwo Lu. So the Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tauri Lagbaja says the soldier who was caught on camera being arrested uh, by Governor Sanwo Lu has been arrested for plying one way. Now some people may celebrate, some people may feel that mm, don't we have bigger fish to fry? Well, that's a conversation to be had. Now, as we, um, before we move away from The Guardian, we take an African story, which is Niger's coup leader's free president, Bazoum's son. So, uh, Salem Bazoum, who is the 22-year-old 20, son of the uh, embattled president, and his wife have also been released, and that's after mediation by Togo and Sierra Leone. Very quickly to our international papers, the Daily Telegraph from the UK. This post office scandal is not going anywhere. Now, this headline, especially at the very top, the commentary by Alison Pearson, a headline we never expected to see from the United Kingdom. Britain has been exposed as a hotbed of cronyism and corruption. Uh, so this is how Alison Pearson described how the former chief executive Paula Venels of the post office continues to, continued to enjoy pay rises and bonuses even as the Horizon IT scandal continued, sent people into bankruptcy, false convictions, you name it, she was enjoying benefits and she has uh, uh, she has ceded to pressure. That's Paula Venels, former chief executive of the post office, has ceded to pressure to relinquish her CBE. That's commander of the British order. She will be doing so today. Quickly to the Financial Times is where we close our review today. The Financial Times, of course, looking at the business angle, says Fujitsu, who are the owners of this Horizon IT software that caused so much chaos in the British post office system, Fujitsu was still the joint or sole recipient of 4.9 billion pounds worth of government contracts. 3.6 billion uh, of that was under Rishi Sunak's time as chancellor or PM. And they were being awarded all of these contracts while this post office IT scandal was taking place, which is why Alison Pearson will say Britain has been exposed as a hotbed of cronyism and corruption. So maybe for now they should stop pointing fingers at us here in Africa as we get our house in order because they have a lot of issues to sort out on home ground. Uh, and, and quoting the words of uh, former British Prime Minister David Cameron, Britain is fantastically corrupt. <laughs> And we've always known that. We are not surprised. But I want to s note something. I think it's a top page of this day. That FCCC, FCCPC Act shows that Tinubu may have breached the law and removal of Irukera. I think President Tinubu should do atonement as regards this to Irukera. Apart from the fact that he has to go through Senate before he removes you know, the FCCP Commissioner Irukera. Also, this was at a time that when the country needed Forex, Irukara did his work diligently and he got a sanction against British American tobacco for $110 million. And the man that had just gotten that kind of great deal of you know, money for Nigeria should not be treated that way and was like dismissed. Anyway, I'm happy that Mr. Baron and Lucas has come out to say that he, they've been relieved of their position while the president scouts for another person to replace them. But the optics look bad. Because it just looks as though that people that do good work in this country would throw them under the bus. And Rukira did a lot of good work. Not only this uh, British American tobacco case. What about the case of Dr. Peju Gomba? And there are many other cases like that that the Rukira had. And even before then, Rukira was part of the fight against a big multinational pharmaceutical when they had vaccination go wrong in some parts of the country. We all remember that case. That was the case that made Rukira prominent in national scene. So please, atonement should be made. The law was breached, atonement should be made. And I'm happy that everyone started with Baron Aduga saying the word dismissed, because the word dismissed is libelous, like Professor Fallon said.
And very quickly, um, the case of the uh, army, uh, the chief of army staff coming out to say that they were here, they were going to investigate the army, the soldier who had come online to uh, slander uh, the governor of Lagos State. I think that's an excellent move, a great move, because I think it, it, it brought a stain and embarrassment to our military service for a man in uniform to come out to defend what was obviously a contravention of the laws of the state and then not only defend it, go ahead to then insult the principal of the state. I'm glad that he also clarified that the others who had come, because a few others then came, and that almost became an army challenge to, to come and talk against the governor, said they were fake, that they investigated, and it was just one man, the first person who did it, and they were going to investigate him and appropriate punishment meted out. I think that's um, excellent. We should follow to the, the end. We don't want to just hear an announcement that he's being investigated. As I've said earlier, let it serve as a deterrent to others so we'll never see this show of shame again. Okay, very quickly. Two things. Um, I'm all for due process. Due process must be followed. Where due process is breached, you further create problems within the system. So even when the president wants to remove anybody, due process must be uh, followed. However, the point about dismiss, relieved of duties. Yeah, dismissal gives the impression that the person has committed an offense. And that person has been taking due process, a descriptive process, and found guilty of certain infractions. That's when you say dismissed. And when you are dismissed, you are not entitled to any benefit. So it's, it's the strongest kind of word. But if you say relieve of duty, it's the same thing as saying you have been removed from office. And the point there is that the president who has executive powers under Section 5 of the 1999 Constitution, can hire and fire. All the people who fall under the principle of delegated powers hold their offices at his pleasure. No matter the level of performance or whatever, if he says he no longer needs your services, you are gone. But I get the argument about due process being important. That's number one. Number two, you brought a story about these soldiers who have been abusing Governor Sonwolu. And I think it's good that their superior authorities have, at least in one instance, have arrested one of them to say you can't go about abusing the governor of the state. And we need to make this clear. You know, the, the day when the incident occurred, I, I, I commented on it and I said that the, what the governor of Lagos State has established is that nobody is above the law. The soldiers, the military, they believe that they are above civilian authority. And under this uh, 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 country called Nigeria. Nobody is above the law, not even under the, uh, uh, the military, uh, under, uh, not even the military. What they say is that they cannot be subjected to the authority of bloody civilians. So that's their concern, that uh, Governor Sonwolu is a bloody civilian. Who is he to detain a soldier? No. The Armed Forces Act, what is called the Doctrine of Compact, says that if a military officer commits an offense that is military related, then it can be only be tried under martial law. But there are exceptions. Sections 110 to 114 of the Armed Forces Act of 2004, which says that the exception is that you can be tried under civilian jurisdiction and also under military jurisdiction. If the offense you have committed is not strictly of a military nature. So uh, uh, soldiers with that exception in the Armed Forces Act of uh, uh, 2004 cannot say, they cannot be caught to question under civilian uh, authorities. But the civilian authorities can sanction you and then further hand you over to your military uh, uh, authorities and they, they deal with you. So all these videos against uh, 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 Sonwolu, all those soldiers should be caught to order and all the other people who have been abusing the governor should be sanctioned by their superiors. The military is not above the laws of the land. That's why they also have martial law, and that's why there are those exceptions that I've quoted in the Armed Forces Act. As for the sub postmasters issue in the, uh, Britain, uh, front page of the Times, the simple issue is that a few years back, there was a problem with the horizon IT system in the post, uh, post system, and a lot of people were sacked. Many died, many committed suicide, only to now discover that it was a computer fault. And that's why there is that outrage. And that's why the lady, you know, now uh, uh, well, who is uh, a, a CBE, has now said she's going to return, uh, you know, a medal to the king. But it's, it's, it's the king's prerogative to officially 
withdraw the CBA. But the outrage, 1.2 million signatures. People say, no, you made a mistake. You didn't provide the necessary uh, leadership. And then they are saying Fujitsu, which is the Japanese company that was responsible for that uh, uh, computer software uh, that uh, sent too many people to the graves and got them convicted, should not enjoy privileges or deals from the government. The Sunak government, even you know, giving them certain uh, priority uh, contracts. So that's a country where you, you have public opinion, you know, shaping uh, things. And the woman has apologized, you know, the former postmaster general who left five years ago. I hope you have a system here in Nigeria where people are made to account. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.